Hey everybody, this is Kodok here, and uh, ah yes, uh, you'll probably remember that my most recent video was about a game from Chile called Mitos y Leyendas, known in uh, English as Myths and Legends, and which actually received a, uh, a brief uh, English release as Myths and Legends, and you're able to find some of those online. However, the original game, which was produced by a company called Solo, eventually faded away and has more recently been picked up by a company called, uh, I believe it's Phoenix? Phoenix Entertainment. Um, so Phoenix Entertainment has essentially rebooted the game in ways similar to uh, games like uh, L5R have gotten reboots under different uh, under different publishing companies. So this is um, <clears throat> this is uh, turns out I, I said that I was having trouble getting more recent cards, but of course, lo and behold, soon after I post the video, I take another look, and all of a sudden, I find somebody in Missouri has these. These uh, little box sets here. Now, what what uh, what this is is it's kind of like a half booster box. It says Invasión Oscura, La Caída de Roma, uh, Carlo Magno. At least uh, is that Carlo Magno or Carlo Magno? I know if it was Italiano, it would be Carlo Magno, like Bologna or Signore. But um, I'm just gonna call him Carlo Magno. What this says in English is Dark Invasion, The Fall of Rome, Charlemagne. Um, Interesting that it's called the Fall of Rome, seeing as Charlemagne is the one who created the Holy Roman Empire in roughly the year 800, and that lasted roughly a thousand years until the 1800s when it became the Ottoman Empire, which some of you might know as uh, one of the countries that was utterly uh, eliminated as a result of World War One. Anyway, Charlemagne was a, a, a Frenchman. He was a, a king of the Franks before creating... Um, what would become the Holy Roman Empire, but uh, that's what that says in uh, in uh, Spanish right there. Um, forgive me, my um, Spanish is kind of rusty. I'm probably going to be consulting my translation program on my phone rather frequently, but uh, I can I can kind of see. Uh, I don't know if it's easy to see for you, but yeah, there we go. You can see like uh, there's some raised like uh, just a, a nice gloss work on there with a large uh, a large cross on there that's uh, I guess I guess that's appropriate for Charlemagne it also is designed to look like a book although it, it hilariously kind of reminds me that um, every year around Christmas which is coming up fairly soon they put out like the boxes of lifesavers which look like picture books they kind of remind me of this so uh, yeah I can kind of hear them rattling around there so let's take a look at what's uh, inside so I assume this is Charlemagne illustrator uh, illustrated by Wolf, and it says down here, Contiendo, uh, diez sobres invasión oscura, um, dos sobres dinastia del dragón, uh, uh, dos cartas promocionales invasión oscura, um, y uh, uh, tres cartas promocionales dinastia del dragón. I kept thinking the Japanese word for three. Um, but yeah, ten booster packs of invasión oscura, um, or dark invasion, and two packs of Dragon Dynasties, so as, along with uh, uh, five promo cards. So it's essentially like half a booster box, but um, with five toppers in it. That's pretty cool. Something you don't really see uh, Magic do. If, if Magic, if, if the if the secret layers were like this, where they included the cards, but also a ton of really cool, like a ton of packs inside or something, I think then people would not be so harsh on the uh, secret layers. The fact that the secret layers only contain, like, a couple of cards and are basically like a fancy secondhand product, I think is one of the big problems people have with it. But yeah, this is one of those... Uh, I managed to get this thing for about $25 shipped, which means I paid roughly $2 a pack. Um, that's something a lot of people on the previous video who are, who are from Chile and, Ar and Argentina and thereabouts, something they told me was um, one of the reasons Myths and Legends really took off is because it was way cheaper than Pokemon and Magic. I'm looking online, and yeah, you can get, like, full booster boxes, brand new, like, retail for, like, 50 bucks. Um, and that's that's with the, the, the dollar currently suffering from all of the craziness happening in this country. Um, but uh, let's take a look. It opens up. It's actually... Uh, it's actually... Uh, <laughs> I made a joke about it kind of looking like a storybook. It actually is. Uh, this is a... Uh, this is, uh, I, I don't know, I'm not going to take the time to translate all this, but it says uh, the Empire of Charlemagne. So um, this is clearly a brief biography about, uh, about, the, uh, about the Empire Charlemagne created that did eventually become the Holy Roman Empire. 
Um, but uh, let's see. Here's the inside of the box. And here's our... Oh, jeez. The promo cards are, are loose. They're just kind of loose in here. They don't have any. Oh, and there's six of them. Oof. Well, it's a, a good thing I have... Uh, I brought my uh, set of sleeves with me. Let's see if the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! size ones still work or if they've moved up to magic size. Nope, looks like they are uh, still the Yu-Gi-Oh! size. So uh, let's uh, get these uh, some puppies all sleeved up in proper light. Got Charlotte. Yeah, I can I can see I'll, I'll, um, um, Astolfo. It's, it's kind of hard to see. In fact, I think it's time to zoom in on these. Yeah, you can see already with poor Astolfo here, his... Uh, his, his uh, or there we go. Yeah, you can kind of see that there's already a little bit of damage to uh, Astolfo's uh, name text there. That's what they get for just kind of putting them in there and letting them rattle around. I mean, uh, at least put them in some... Oh, these are magic size. Uh, let me see. I thought those were Yu-Gi-Oh size. Huh. Should I just use the, the straight-up Yu-Gi-Oh designed one? Sure, why not? Majestic majestic uh, Stardust Dragon. But yeah, they... they... Okay, uh... So... Sanctuario Yoruba, the Yoruba Sanctuary. Uh, this looks like it's, uh, I think this is uh, the mask there. I think that's actually from a set coming, that, a more recent set called Kilimanjaro. Or an older set called Kilimanjaro. So they've uh, they've gone and they, they it seems like they changed the borders for each set. Like this uh, dragon here is, follow, is uh, Dark Invasion. We have the mask here that's supposed to be Kilimanjaro. And we have these three over here for the... Uh, for dragon dynasties. Uh, we have Huang Di, Kunlun Shan, and Lu Dongban. Uh, you are free to uh, correct my pronunciation. Um, anybody out there who speaks Chinese, and you can see they, they also have the it's a bit hard to see. Let's see if I yeah, there they are. They actually have the actually have the, the, the Chinese letters on there. I'm tempted to call them kanji, but I know that's the, the Japanese term for these more complicated characters. Uh, let's see. So another thing they have is they have the flavor text over the image, kind of like how they have it on uh, a number of modern games so that you can tell that it's not game text and it's allowed to get a little bit lost. Monumento. Okay, Monument. That's a new one. Uh, Monument is, a, is a, a card type I am kind of unfamiliar with. I know we talked about talismans and totems. I guess monuments work like totems or are they different? Construction. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at some of these. We got a monument. Oh, we got two monuments. Oh, the, the monument icons are actually different depending on which set they're from. That's not going to get confusing at all. Search for a two cost. Oh, when you build it, look for a two cost talisman in your castle and play it, reducing its cost by one. If you play two or more talismans this turn, set a timer. Pon un contrador de tiempo. Find a talisman in your castle that and pay without its cost. That talisman cannot be bypassed, and when you play it, pa uh, banish it. Okay, so it allows me to, uh, so this, this one, uh, like I said, I don't know how much translation I'll be able to do on this, but it allows me to, uh, search my deck for a, uh, for a, uh, for talismans, which is kind of nice. Uh, you can construct this monument if you have six or more cards in your cemetery. Put an ally from your cemetery from, uh, w with cost of four or less, um, into play. Uh, okay, so there's the oh, so I so I guess the idea is that a monument is it starts getting built and it gets progress and it uh, and it gets finalized. Oh, and it has uh, las cartas and okay, so so all of your cards get um, get exhumar during the final phase if you finish the uh, if you finish the Yoruba sanctuary. That's actually pretty strong. Exhumar is of course exhum, which means you can play them from the discard pile. You got Huang Di, who's unblockable. Um, Charlemagne is also unblockable. They are both uh, cost two, power three. So there is a bit of power creep going on in uh, in this game. I can see that now. Um, on your vigilance turn, you okay, let's see. Yeah, like I said, my Spanish is rusty. I'm having some trouble reading some of these. I'll try to translate when I can. Okay, once per turn, you can look in your castle for a uh, warrior. I believe that's Caballero. Uh, warrior or a uh, weapon and add them to your hand once per turn you can discard a weapon to destroy a totem or weapon your opponent controls okay oh that's actually that's actually pretty good for a deck that relies on a lot of weapons like uh, like my favorite one where the guy's like oh you better step back man you don't know what i'm gonna do with this um let's see hong di 
Jason Park, Arsu Costa, ah, and uh, Lou Dongbang, Kondo. And, yeah, and this, this guy's a, oh, is that a, that's a power three cost one. Anyway, let's move on to the packs. Like I said, oh, we forgot to take a look at the card backs. How does it compare to the, uh, how does it compare to the, the previous card backs here? Let's use a card from the pack as an example. So here's how they, they looked before. I believe they looked different in the new one. Or let's see if I can get Charlemagne out here. There we go, Charlemagne. Oh, yeah. That looks uh, very different. Ooh, that's kind of neat. Let's see if I can get it to work again. Yeah, so they actually have some embossing on the back of these cards that uh, are in the shape of a castle. It's it's the shape of the castle from the old cards, only rather than being explicitly drawn on there, it's now done as a uh, printing effect. So we have some nice texture on the cards here. Um, the cards are... Uh, they feel pretty good. I, I kind of miss... How the uh, how the old rares had like textured foil on them that was actually kind of cool although it, it did occasionally make the cards hard to read so I guess I can understand why they moved to a, a foil with some silver printing on them so pretty neat anyway we have a choice here we can either do the two packs of the dragon dynasties or we can do the ten packs of invasion oscura so let's get uh, let's get uh, let's get dragon dynasties out of the way first so um it says eight plus 11 cards mitos y leyendas not appropriate for uh, uh, children under the age of three ah so we have bixi uh cuando este oh this is a, is this oh this is a gold card i see okay so if it doesn't have an icon up here that means it's a gold card so they have gold cards with special abilities now um when you use this when you use this gold to pay the cost of a beast, Alimento en hasta dos bestia objetivo queer controles. Alimento, whatever that means. Let me see if I can get this to work on the translator here. So we have gold with special abilities. I don't know if you're allowed to start with uh, special ability gold in your in your uh, in as your as your starting gold. You can put a food counter on up to two target beasts you control. Okay, so clearly this thing is, uh, this gold is meant to be a chain starter of some kind. Shuai Joe, the a talisman with the lucky cat. I thought the lucky cat was Japanese. Okay, uh, put an ally, put an ally with indestructible um, that costs two or less from your, uh, from your deck to your hand. Erlang Shen. So he's a, a god or an immortal. Um, oh, so he's an ally. He's a cost on power one. Cuando sea destruido puedes convertir el aliado objetivo en un, en un totem sin habilidad. Okay. Uh, let's see. What does that mean? This, uh, this translation program is thankfully a lot more reliable when it comes to Spanish than it does to Chinese, because Chinese is a bit a bit difficult. When it is destroyed, you can convert the ally objective on a token without skill. I, I believe objetivo, I thought that was a... Um, okay, Dance of the Lion. Oh, this is another gold. Uh, Zhang Ka. Zhang Ka, uh, Furious. I believe, that, I believe that means he can attack the turn he's put into play. Reduce the cost of this ally, one gold, for each barbarian you control. Uh, that I've, I've heard about barbarian rush being a bit of a, a broken strategy. Um, when he enters the game, uh, play a, 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 a objetivo de tu cementerio. Okay, put a, uh, a barbarian card from your... Oh, you can, uh, you can play a, barbario, a barbarian from your cemetery uh, at a cost of two less. So this guy, wow, that's kind of crazy. Zheng Guan, indestructible. So this is a character that I would be able to pull with, uh, with the Shuai Jiu card. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing these names incorrectly. So this is another indestructible card. Um, Cuando un oro entre en juego bajo el control del oponente, este oponente bota dos cartas. So I believe this card. When a gold uh, enters play under the... Okay. Boots two cards. I guess do they have to discard two cards to uh, to play uh, the cards. So we have the new. This is a weapon. Oh, it's the auto crossbow. Uh, I remember this. Anybody who's played Age of Empires remembers this. Um, the wielder gains two power. 
uh, si el portador el ancestral eterno o sombra cuando haga daño de combate el oponente objetivo descarta una carta if the carrier is ancestral eternal or shadow when when it damages the opponent they have to discard a card okay that's pretty good especially for cost two muro de nueve dragones um i believe that is a is that a statue of the or mural of the seven dragons when this gold is uh, used, oh, when this gold is sent to the cemetery because of your opponent's card effect, you can return it to your hand. Okay. Uh, ocho tesoros. A mercenary. Oh, this is another 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 gold card. Okay. Uh, Wing Chun. A another talisman. If you control two or more indestructible characters reduce the cost of this talisman by two gold destroy all allies in play oh this is this is, is this wrath of god okay so yeah this uh th this is basically a wrath of god card that costs less if you have uh, some indestructible characters in play um i, I guess it doesn't affect the indestructible characters so it's, it's more like a picky wrath of god to or ya. Yeah. So it's a beast with Furious, which means uh, it can attack the turn it comes into play. Um, allies that cost two, four, or six that you control uh, gain one point of power. And allies that are that cost one and three in my attack line cannot be destroyed by talismans. So that's cool. All right, so Dinasta del Dragon 2. We're not going to get much of a sampling of, uh, of Dragon Dynasties here. He Zhang Yu, when this card enters play... Uh, this is a four cost four power banish any amount of ancestral that you control or, um from your hand then draw a card for each okay so you can discard ancestral cards from your hand to draw that many cards and all of your other ancestral characters gain two power so there's a lot more emphasis on archetypes in this remake of the game the original game it was cards with abilities there wasn't really anything that was holding them together gong gong uh, a dragon indestructible when this comes into play you can discard an indestructible ally or or a dragon to search your cast okay so you can discard an indestructible or a dragon to search your deck for another indestructible or dragon okay that's useful um i'm not pronouncing that palmas de acero is that palms of stone cannot be countered uh when you oh it's a talisman Sterar una carta de tu mano para jugar este talisman. Oh, you have to discard a card from your hand in order to use it. Destroy a card in play that isn't, um, that is not, destroy one non-gold card in play. Uh, then the, uh, and they, uh, oh, oh, so you just, so you destroy a creature and whoever gets hit by it has to mill too. Oh, okay. Oh, I got a couple of, I got a couple of shiny cards in this one. Let me see. Is there a way to tell rarity on here? Yes, there actually is an indicator of rarity on these cards. Welcome back, by the way. Uh, I was in the middle of the recording the video when my neighbors decided to put on this obnoxiously loud movie on. So anyway, what we have here, um, Fist of Steel. I said Fist of Stone. I was mistaken. Um, what we have here is with this black mark here, this is actually, I believe, supposed to be an ultra rare. So... It actually goes a step beyond being super rare. It is actually an ultra rare. So well, this is actually the highest rarity in the game. I, I, or, or at least uh, there's also like a, there's also like the legendary status. Um, that would be like the secret rare. This is like an ultra rare. Um, I actually took a look on the on the back of the pack where what happens is each pack is eleven cards and it contains one rare, which in this case are called Rayal, which is like regal. Um, three uncommons, which in this case is called courtesan. And six common cards, which are called vassals in this game, and one gold card. However, as is the case here, uh, and by gold they mean uh, b they mean basic gold with no abilities. I think I got one of those in the previous pack. Yeah, just standard gold with no special effects. This is actually a change from how the uh, the 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 old Brotherhood packs did it. The Brotherhood packs actually did not contain any gold cards at all, but these newer packs contain basic gold although there are also gold with special abilities but it means that if you want to play this game you can pick up just the packs you don't have to buy a deck you'll get the gold you need and since it's 
average one gold per pack one in six packs instead contains a uh, a super rare or better this is an ultra we'll see if we can get further than uh, further than this but yeah you can get you only need about 15 gold to make a deck and there are gold cards in the other rarities as well like uh we got we got uh we got a couple common gold i think we got an uncommon gold so yeah that pack actually contained four gold three of which had special abilities so you'll have more than enough gold to uh run your deck with so yeah this is the card fist of steel you discard a card from your hand to destroy any non-gold card on the field and whoever's card gets destroyed has to mill two so that's why this is an ultra rare because it's a two gold cost spot removal that's really really good um moving on we have uh Bu Jiao Sheng, which is the Iron Fan, I believe. This is a, 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 a some something from the story Journey to the West. I believe most of you are familiar with it. It's also called Sayuki. It's the inspiration for a lot of stories. Um, it's one of the uh, one of the great works of uh, ancient Asian uh, East Asian literature. Um, so what this is, it's for one cost. Wow, these these a lot of these are a lot cheaper than they used to be. They really like the rush down power creep decks on here. Um, so the uh, equipped character gains two power and at the end of your final phase an opponent has to uh, an opponent discards three cards afterwards um as purificar hasta tantas cartas objetivo de los cementerios como fuerza tenga el portador so i guess it cleans out a discard pile i assume this is an effect that only happens when it comes into play oh dear i put my my translator away like i said my 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 espanol is pretty weak um we have a kyang uh the equipped character gains two and uh if the if the wielding character is a barbarian when you declare an attack it gains indestructible until end of turn okay that's pretty good acupuncturu i wonder what that is in english acupuncturu okay so this is a talisman if you control two or more allies with indestructible reduce the cost of this talisman by one so there so yeah there's a lot of there's uh there's more uh alignment in making a consistent deck that uses archetypes in this newer one there are cards that reduce their costs there are cards that give specific benefits to other cards hmm on one hand i do like the the structure on the other it leaves out a little bit of the adventure that i got with brotherhood with how i was able to find strategies um although apparently the big strategy apparently i had maui absolutely pegged as an overpowered card <laughs> uh anyway so what we have is um so destroy five cards from oh from a cemetery afterwards uh, roba una carta that's draw a card i believe oh I, uh, is it mill five and afterwards I, have to, mm, <laughs> I really need to work on my spanish uh pagoda dakin los okay so ally oh so this is a totem this is uh, one of the ones that stays in play allies with uh, fury can uh, under your control gain one fortitude gain one power and unblockable oh wow <laughs> that's scary uh for cost two yeah that's that's practically a win condition card oh we have the g oh this is uh this is the kind of spear that lubu is famous for wielding g lubu how come your mother lets you have two feathers on your cap um wielder gains two power if the powder is a uh, 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 a warrior, a caballero, or sacerdote, I'm not sure what that one is. So you purify three cards from the cemetery. I assume purifying imply, uh, involves removing cards from the discard pile and removing them from play. Um, so though that's a, a powerful effect to um, fire up to to purify uh, to remove cards from the discard pile because this is a life decking game and in a lot of life decking games you uh use the discard pile a lot of a lot of cards with life decking use the discard pile as a second hand so this is designed to shut that ability down emperatrice lu Emper um so em empress lu unblockable um she's a warrior cost one power two um at the start of your turn you can uh if she is armed you can draw two cards and discard two cards oh that's interesting so she lets you cycle cards through your hand if there are cards with uh with X Humar, that's not a good, not a bad idea. And then we have Shi, uh, Shui Gui, Shi Gui. We, uh, that might be Shi Gui. Um, so he's a, a Sombra, so that's a, a shadow, shadow type. And with this mask here, that kind of works. Um, so it's another warrior, cost two power two. At the uh, at the 
the start of your main step. Um, okay, you can pay one gold to take a card, to take an ally from your cemetery to your hand. Um, and during your main phase, you can destroy this ally to uh, draw a card. Oh, okay. So he's a pretty basic cycle. So those are the cards I got from Dragon's Dynasties. Dynastia del Dragon, or Dragon Dynasty, I guess. Um, we got some interesting cards. We got the Iron Fan. We got Fists of Steel. I wonder if there are uh, are more cards like One Inch Punch that are about... I got Zheng Ka as well. Um, so we got some got some interesting cards in there. A lot of, uh, a lot of cards about Chinese mythology in this case. So now we move on to the Fall of Rome. So we have uh, a Viking-looking barbarian and... Um, Scary goat man riding, uh, riding skeleton horses. Are these supposed to be uh, druids, uh, perhaps? So we have ten packs of these. So these are going to take a bit longer. I'll try to I'll try to speed them up a little bit. If I get one that's particularly interesting, if I get like a mega or a or an ultra or something, at least I, I assume this is supposed to be ultra. So the megas have a, a white logo and the ultras have a black logo. This has a black logo with a white face. So I'm not sure what to make of that. I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. So. We have Vola as uh, so we have another god, so we do have some uh, some interesting stuff. Once per turn, so I guess you can discard a totem to destroy cards equal to the cost of that totem. Ermanric Fury uh, reduce the cost of an uh, of this ally for one for each bar for each card for each allied with Fury you control. Um, when this enters the play, you can search your deck for an ally with Fury and add it to your hand. So this is a guy who seems like he's supposed to supposed to um just just you know he's a you just dump characters uh from your from your hand Cranug. so we have a totem and, and i'm not sure i like how they keep changing the icons for like the totems and the monuments up here that's a little bit annoying um errant not sure what that means once per turn uh when you have an ally with four or more attack entries enters the field under your control um you can destroy an enemy, an, an opposing enemy that costs two or less. Oh, that's, ah, yeah, that's pretty good. Tremi, okay, so here's our basic gold, so no super in this pack. Velis, um, unaffected by allies, so I assume he takes no damage from allies. Ancestral, when this guy enters play, you can search your deck for an ancestor or desterarios. Um, once per turn, oh, you can, uh, you can destroy an ancestral to... Anola Talisman. Oh, wow, that's good. Um, Book of Ock. Fury. Um, if you can, uh, it's another dragon. If you control, if you control uh, creatures with, oh, it's a power six. Wow. If you control allies with three or more different costs, you can play it without. You can play it for free. So if you have a zero, a one, and a two in play, you can play this guy for free. I don't know if they have zero cost characters in this game like they did in the in Brotherhood. Oh, but when you play, you have to discard two cards. Oh, you can destroy two cards to destroy two enemies. Oh, okay, that's good. Uh, Gunderic, Fury, um, Svetovid, Svetovid, an ancestral. Walter, Walter de Aquitania. Okay, Mari Oraka, indestructible. When this enters the play, your uh, search your deck for an indestructible ally and add it to your hand. Wow, there's a lot of these. These are like like Yu-Gi-Oh level field flooding effects. It's kind of kind of kind of crazy. And Glacier, reduce the cost of this totem for one for each ally with fury you have in play. Um, when you enter your final phase, your opponent uh, destroys four cards, huh? Oh, that that must be oh, uh, ruin. That must be ruin. Both that must be ruin. So that involves sending cards from that's uh, it's a straight up mill card. Well, that's why it costs four, I suppose. A totem with a straight up mill effect. Wow. But then again, that's why they have a lot of destruction. Lupus de Aquitania. So, Wolf of Aquitania. Uh, another Guerrero. Oh, Guerrero. Okay. Oh, Caballero is, is Rider. Okay. Olfalus. Sacerdote. So, Sacerdote must be a priest or something. Inblockable. Madidu. <laughs> Madido. Uh, he can be played from the discard pile. That's Exhumar. Fibulas Gemelas, so that's a gold card, so we're not getting a, not getting an ultra in this one. Clothar the second. Retador. I'm not sure what Retador means. Um oh he's power four cost two. I wonder if Retador is defender. 
at the start of your uh, at the start of the mythological battle agrupar hasta dos alados objetivo once per turn okay gains fury okay athan athana guilt another guerrero servita fairy so oh, this is a talisman okay you can search your deck for a fairy or eternal and add it to your hand Vesuna. Oh wow, that's a wildly inappropriate image. Zeno, or is it Zeno? Unblockable. If you uh, destroy an ally with indestructible, with unblockable, or uh, discard a uh, weapon from your hand to destroy an allied. There are a lot of really powerful cards in this. And then we have Red Cap. This one from Shadow has the ability to be played from discard pile, and Calopus. Cal can control a gun on. So, so you're, uh, oh, sin habilidad. Okay, so creatures without, that creatures without a type or creatures without a, uh, without a keyword? Hmm, hard to tell from here. All right, moving on. Maybe I should keep my, uh, keep my rares on here. But yeah, that that dryad was yikes. Okay, um, crack or is that track? It's hard to tell. That that looks like a C or a T. I assume it's I assume it's uh, I assume it's crack the dragon, um, crack the magic dragon, Ocker belts. Oh wow, <laughs> exhumar. That looks like uh, that looks like a that's clearly a demon of some kind, um. So Tarlas Armas. Oh, give up arms? Okay, destroy all opponent's arms. After, for each arm to destroy, uh, its controller destroys, uh, takes two damage. Okay. And there's our gold, so we're not getting a mega in this one. Yelmo de Emesa. Mary Luid. Mary Luid. Um, so we have, a, almost looks like a Wendigo here. Another one with Exhumar. Spiculum. Oh, that's a yeah. That's a kind of spear. So, okay, if you can, tr tr uh, okay, if you control, uh, so the the equipped card gets one one power and indestructible, but you can play it for free if you control three cards in play with different costs. Condia or Gondiak. When this card is in, uh, when this card enters play. If you only control barbarians, you can uh, you can only play barbarians. You can only play allies on your next turn. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Dressed. Oh, it looks like uh, he looks like the the dad of boy from here. Grivite. Oh, another dragon, indestructible. Glazer again. And oh, did I get it? Wait a minute. I got Grivite. I got him twice. That's not supposed to happen. I got him twice in the same pack. I thought that kind of thing wasn't supposed to happen. All right, on to the next pack. Making sure we got them in view. Bestia, Blindada, looks like a pangolin. Vala, we already got her. Halja, indestructible. Tremis, oh, another, another. Bellabog, maybe I should do the, do the thing where uh, I'd, I'd have to cycle six cards from the bottom though. Bellabog, <clears throat> Gunderic, Bukovac, Synthgrunt, Rubble de Truino, Ziva, and Learn Makaik. All right, on to the next one. So, yeah, let's do the thing. Uh, it's weird that they have the rare so high on the pack. So, so rare on the bottom. Hippogriff, or Hipposurf. Hippo something. Siegbird the first, unblockable. Athena Guild, we already saw that. Raskovic. Raskovnik, okay. When this enters the play, uh, you can take the top card of your okay. Put it in your hand. If it's if it's a gold, put it in your hand. Okay. Totila. Mavka. Vagan Mata Mata Dragonis. Aramanaric, we already saw him. Oh, Schwarzer Lindworm. Oh, we got an Ultra. 
Or is this a, a super? Again, it's hard to tell. I think it's because it's the black flag. I think that means it's an ultra. Carlos Martel. Errant and blockable. Um, when he enters play, if you only control Caballeros, which is a horseman, um, you can look, you can search your deck for a, a horseman that costs two or less and a weapon. And you can play both of them from your hand. Oh, wow. And your Caballeros gain one uh, Fuerza and Imblockable. Wow. Errante, is Errante, is that unique? But yeah, that's a that's definitely a good card. And Marax, who can be played from the discard pile. Oh, wow. Power four for cost two. Oh, you can take control, I guess. Oh, cards without abilities. Oh, wait, I don't, I don't think there are any of those, are there? All right. So now we're on to the, uh, the Crazy Goat Man packs. But yeah, that's uh, I should uh, probably probably sleeve this guy here, sleeve the ultras, sleeve of Carlos Martel. I'm not sure how many of these cards are good. This guy's just like like an all around buff. He pulls more cards from the deck in order to to to, to when when he hits play, and he gave, gives them more skills and power and stuff. So down to the top. Guardian de la Fey. Guardian of the Fey. Alsis. A lot of barbarians, yeah. Vesuna, there she is again. Sumsik de Kele. There are some pretty provocative images for the fairy archetype, aren't there? Um, Alsis. Yeah, I got I got him twice in the same pack. I d it happened again. That shouldn't be happening. Calopus Bayan the first. Um, let's see, when you put this into play, you can uh Oh, when you play when you put him in play from your castle, you can destroy uh, an um, a weapon or totem in play. Oh, okay. Bayard, Twisto, Fibulus Gamelus. Okay, so no supers in this one. Compitalia. Okay, so cannot be countered. When you play this talisman, uh, this Tierolo, um, and purify. Two cards de, uh, from your opponent's discard pile and uh, d uh, draw two cards. Oh, that's really good. Uh. He's going, Let's see if I can get a super to compare just to make sure I'm not going crazy. That's six, yeah. Okay. So Mr. Kale, Guardian de la Fey, Glazer, Nehalenia, Bannock. Hey, he's a purple people eater. Onda de Truenos. The, the Spear of Truth, I guess, or San, San Joalga. Kemar a los Kaidos. During your final phase, um, in the cemetery, in vez de esto desterrario. Krimlda. Oh, okay, so this is a super, yeah. I guess I was right. This is, this really is, uh, well, one of these is a super, one of these is an ultra, although... Yeah, this one has like special foil effects on it. This one has like the, the 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 embossed the embossing we saw in the promos. Um, so this I assume is a super. Brown the brand the Benedict, or Benedict brand I guess. Once per turn. Another ally, okay. When they're another ally with Imblockable or a or a Caballero. Um, and comes into play under your control. Draw a card. Reduce a gold cost of your allies and blockable Caballeros the arm off. So, okay, so these two work well together. Nice, nice, nice. And Rin. Uh, car, uh, what is it? Cards with even cost cannot declare attacks. Like I said, I seriously need to brush up on my, my, my Spanish. It's not the best. I'm sure some of you folks will point out the really, really good cards and talk about how magnificent they are and will correct me on everything I was wrong about. But I invite it. It just it's just a reflection of my own lack of experience. Okay. There we go. Dracavic, some kind of demon thing of shadow. We have a dragon. Guiverno. Fury and uh, once per turn you can destroy uh, oh, you can destroy one gold. You control to destroy an ally to destroy an opposing ally that costs two or less oh that's not bad um calopus mari uraka walter de aquitania 
Svetovid. Oh, he's got two heads. He's got three heads. He's got a lot of heads. Oswu. Oswu. Ritador. Rotary. Wheel Fuss. Oh, what's this? Oh, this looks fancy. It's another Reki Teate. So, Reki So, it actually has like a... Yeah, it actually has like a foil texture on there. That's cool. So we're definitely gonna sleeve that one up. That's another, another, another ultra, I assume. Indestructible. Oh wow, a gold with indestructible. Once per turn. I'm gonna cut the day to mono para cancelar la habilidad objetivo de un oro arma o totem. But yeah, that's neat. It's another time I've gotten a gotten a rare resource card, a super super awesome and special rare resource card on screen and in the Nixie, that's a, a well-known type of fairy. Another one with provocative artwork. <laughs> so we're down to two packs left. I've already gotten something pretty cool. I got a cool a cool gold card. And I don't I, I think do you have to start with a, a basic gold in play or can you use a special gold to put into play? Because I'd totally start with that. Um let's see Gregor Gregorio the Great. Oh that's one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. That should do it. Woo! Scary zombie baby, Meeling. There's Gritit again. Marobautis. Nothing gonna Marobautis. Mavaka, Totia, no, Totala, Totila, Totala. Keep forgetting it's two L's. Raskovic, Gregor, uh, Gregorio Magno. That's Gregory the Great. Reduce the cost of this ally once per. Uh, once per priest you have in uh, in oh in in your in your ruin pile okay when he enters the play um, oh yeah, objetivo and juego and we have Jate store yate store yate store oh what is what is yate store badalisco oh that's a cute cute little abomination Baron okay. supposed to be like uh, let me see let's see that's not Thor it's uh Baron but yeah it's another another super I got a lot it's supposed to be like one in six but I've gotten how many of the of the supers in this set so far I've gotten two supers and two ultras not bad for for a set of 12 I'm 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 doing doing double what I should be doing this is this is a good box wow um and then we have Imperial Spate, Imperial Saber. Wow, I got some good cards in this in this in this box here. Um, so we have our final pack. We've gotten some good stuff. We've gotten we have so far out of our twelve packs gotten five mega or better. That's been one and two. Let's see if we can make it a, a perfect round 50-50. Because it says on here, um, it says on the pack. Let me see if I can find one that's intact enough. Yeah, um, one in six. Yeah, one in six contain a mega or better instead of the gold. Um, ah, this brings up a nice concept. I call it the reward rare, where when you get something higher rarity than rare, it doesn't count against the rares you normally get in the pack. So the regular rare, which in a lot of games is, you know, probably something pointless, um, is, is you get the rare as well. So like if your parallel foil in a Pokemon pack is a, a, a rare, then you get to keep the rare too. Same with Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I don't know if Magic has that as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, people will calculate that. They'll calculate, Hey, I get bonus rares. If I get, if I get stuff like this for every pack that contains a super and an ultra, I get yet another rare. So that actually pushes my rares beyond what we get. So we got Guivarno, Key Debra. <laughs> it's a giant eel. When a moon hits your eye like a great pizza pie, that's amore. When an eel lunges out, grabs you with its big snout, that's amore. Eel. Hagen, control, uh, controller of the climate. Oh, control the climate. Um, search your deck for um, a dragon or an ancestral and add it to your hand. That's only for cost one. Wow, okay. Um, Synthgunt, Ray Lauren. Oh, it looks, it looks more like a, a dwarf here. Although, oh, he's a fairy. All right, so yeah, he's supposed to be a, a fairy. King King Lauren, I guess. That's the, that's the, I assume that's what he is. He has the crown. Um... Oh, he has a power. He has a cost zero and power zero. If he enters play, if you only control fairies, 
Um, Nifma Cantidad de Cardas gain a win Fuerza for Cada Otro Fairy. Oh, so he gains an additional power for each fairy you have in uh, play. Oh, wow. Okay, so he's a, he's a sort of a, a master of skeletons. The fact that he costs nothing is pretty amazing. Uh, so he's he's like a like like a king of skull servant type card. Clotilda, Rio Congelado, Frozen River. Oh wow, look at that. Yelmo de Antesa, and uh oh my Nordic isn't any good. Fjolkinji? Huh. Not sure about that one, but uh, hey, yeah, we got some we got some fun stuff. So we got out of out of twelve packs. We got five that had Megas or better. And in fact, I believe three of them were Ultras. Only two of them were Megas and three of them were Ultras. If it's the other way around, please do, do, do indeed let me know. These have some fun effects on them. Like this one, because of the bright foil, uh, a bit hard to see through the through the thing. But because of the bright foil, the, the lines of the, the, let me see, I'll have to pull it out. But the lines on this card, the lines where all the rocks are flying become like really bright highlights. It looks really really good and this guy has kind of the stripes and this one has all sorts of lovely lovely texture on it it makes me think that this is this might be a a card that a lot of people want especially considering that it's a a gold a special a special gold card with cool special abilities i assume this is a very important card and we got these guys over here yeah the, the custom foiling tells me that this thing is probably probably better than uh, super rare um but hey yeah that was fun uh I'm sorry my Spanish isn't very good, but I that that seems like it was an inordinately good box. Uh, because on top of that, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I also got the 12 rares for 17. And then, of course, there were the, the 6 toppers. I think it's supposed to be 5, but I uh, instead... I keep bumping the mic. I'm sorry, guys. I instead got 6 toppers. So between the 6 toppers, the 5 ultras and better and the 12 rares i got um how many foil cards is that that's 23 foil cards that's almost as many foil cards or rares that you get in a regular booster box so yeah this uh, this thing was amazing um yeah that was fun so uh i've been trying to get in contact with myths and legends unfortunately i keep hitting the wall when it comes to finding their social media presence their twitter account is for some reason suspended i don't know what any of that is about but um and the, the website all the stuff listed on the back of this box and this is from march 2020 this is a recent set i've been able to find any corresponding information of it if anybody knows what uh, what modern ways i could get in contact with the guys who make this game i'd love to i'd love to take a look at it um i've had a couple companies uh, get in contact with me there's at least another one that um that is saying hey we're working on getting a uh, getting a game together that's uh, in, currently in Spanish, but working on getting an English release done. And would you like to take a look at it when that's ready? And I've said yes. So we're going to have all sorts of fun stuff going on. So that is uh, an unboxing of the Invasion Oscura La Caída de Roma, Carlo Magno, um, that, I, uh, that is apparently some guy in Missouri just so happens to have. I'm going to take a look through these, see what I got. See what sorts of uh, play sets I have. I believe play sets are three in this game. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, until next time, this is Kodak signing off.